this is what happens when you go to ski almost for the first time in your life. <laughs> and you think you can dance on the snow like you used to dance on the sand of the desert in Africa, you know? It's a big difference. And the high heels which match the dress is not an option anymore, so we go bare feet like when we dance on the desert in Africa. We stay in the African spirit, right? Okay, ta-da! <laughs> I have a brace, <laughs> sexy brace, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. <sighs> to start my talk, I will go right away to the subject, vagina. <laughs> Vagina, vagin, uh, in all languages, it doesn't matter which language we are, we are always embarrassed to even speak the word. I mean, if we are embarrassed to even say the word vagina, how are we going to own or appreciate one? We live in an over-sexualized culture, yet when it comes to our vagina or sexuality, there is still the belief that it's less or shameful or wrong. Well, let me tell you how this was, where I come from. I was born and raised in a Muslim culture that divides spaces in two categories. The space outside of your house is the patriarchal space dominated by men, and the space inside of your house is the feminine space ruled by women. I personally could relax only in the feminine space where women could be, to a large extent, free to be themselves. In these secluded female spaces, we practiced a very ancient dance ritual. It's about 4,000 years old, called an Arabic raqsat al-ilahat, the dance of the goddesses. Part of this ritual is the ritual of El Kabasa, which is dancing with the pelvic floor muscles, also with the vagina muscles. This had nothing to do with sex. I'm sorry to disappoint you, mais c'est comme ça. Sexual energy was considered as a life force, a source of vitality, of energy, of vibrancy. And my childhood memories are filled with these vibrant images of female bodies, dancing, shaking, undulating. These female bodies did not look like the perfect female bodies you see in Western media, you know? They are not uh, carefully selected or photoshopped to fake perfection, no. These were real bodies of real women, old, young, hanging, firm, wrinkled, smooth, all kind of bodies. There is no <coughs> duality, no right versus wrong body, or no beautiful versus ugly. They were all different, yet they were one. They were all symbiotically feminine. The youngest got initiated to this dance by the oldest. I got initiated by my grandmother and the oldest of my tribe. I can tell you there is nothing more empowering for a little girl than to be initiated to the art of being feminine by old, wrinkled, shrinking women, yet full of beauty, grace, and playfulness. Then you get the unshakable self-confidence that feminine beauty is ageless, timeless. Then you get to know, deep from inside, as a little girl already, that wild, sensual, young bodies are accidents of nature. But wild, sensual, old bodies, these are works of art. There's a great difference, quand même. Hein? So, but as much as I love these secluded female spaces, I really hated the sexual segregation between the spaces of men and the spaces of women. That was one of the main reasons why I left my home country, my beloved Tunisia. In North Africa, I get very emotional because I love Tunisia, but I hated that separation. So. I went to the West, voila. There, they don't have a segregation. Tout va bien. But it's only when I started to live in the West, in Europe and in America, that I began to appreciate what I once hated it. I realized, actually, how privileged I had been to grow up in these secluded sisterhood spaces where women could be, to a large extent, free to be themselves, where women could construct their identity without the interference of a 
pornified or sexualized male gaze, telling them how their female bodies or sensuality or sexuality should look like. Because in the West, the female sensuality and sexuality has been monopolized and belittled by patriarchs like Freud, we are in Austria, right? Who made women believe that they are sexually inferior to men. I remember the first time I read about Freud's work during my studies at the Sorbonne University in Paris, especially about the penis envy theory. The penis envy theory. Alors, according to Monsieur Freud, the penis envy theory, little girls experience anxiety upon the realization they don't have a penis. So you are a little girl of two and three, and then one day you look and you think like, Franchement. And Freud argues that this shocking deficiency plays a major role in the sexual and co uh, gender construction of women. Franchement, I found this theory completely bizarre. But I thought, okay, this is Freud, this is the West, I come from a Muslim culture in Africa, I'm not going to argue with Freud, you know? But I remember when I went uh, back home to the, uh, during the summer vacation and I was uh, trying to explain to my analphabet grandmother who grew up in a harem about sexual evolution and Freud. And then she looks at me and she says, Ye binti, child, did you go to the emancipated progressive West to learn this kind of rubbish about your vagina? <laughs> this is ridiculous nonsense. Ye binti, child, they must hate their vaginas out there. Ye binti, child, in our Muslim tradition, we call our vagina Bab al-Jannah, the door to paradise. <laughs> our womb is the paradise, our vagina is the door to paradise. Who would exchange a paradise for a penis? <laughs> Wallah, it's better to have a Muslim vagina than a Christian pussy, franchement. <laughs> but you see, I mean, thank God, or thank Goddess, I, I, I had deeply anchored this culture in me because what you need to know is I was raised like my mother and my grandmother with the Islamic jurisprudence. In the Quran, since the seventh century, gender sexual equality is deeply anchored in the Quran. Erotically, the woman is seen as the active hunter and the man as the passive victim. So in Islam, men are in fact the weaker sex. I know a lot of Muslims are amnesic about this, mais bon, c'est in the jurisprudence. So actually, basically, the vagina is stronger than the penis, right? I mean, you can imagine this empowering conviction is in vivid contrast with the passive uh, Phrygian, Freudian female uh, and her absence of female active sexuality, which molds women into impotent creatures. I mean, thank God or thank Goddess, I grew up in, like, deeply anchored in my female DNA. I had this belief in an active female sexuality. And this belief has been kept alive during thousands of years in these wild, sensual, beautiful dances that women practiced at homes and in temples. In the memory of their body cells is anchored the sensual heritage that they passed from one generation to another along the sisterhood of the female lineage. But when matriarchy was dethroned by patriarchy, this divine dance, which was used by women to heal and empower themselves, but also to initiate men to the feminine face of sexuality, has disappeared. The divine dances lost their sacred dimension and it became a profane practice. They left the... the, 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 the the temples to enter the brothels. And our contemporary mass media culture of pornification is the ultimate form of the sexual distortion. The male sexuality, the masculine sexuality in particular, has become dysfunctional, as we see nowadays with the Me Too movement, because it's split. It has lost what the Greek philosopher Plato calls the other half, its feminine half. But this feminine half has not been honored by feminism either, because we feminists have become detached from our feminine lineage. Early Western feminism achieved great things in the emancipation of women. However, it focused on developing the masculine qualities in women so that they compete better with men in a patriarchal system. 
By doing so, the unique value, the unique value of the feminine has been sacrificed, leaving women and men orphans to their feminine side. I see this as a sad and dramatic turn of events because women's emancipation became women's masculinization. So, okay, I am sad, but I am also optimist because I have a dream about our new golden age. In my dream, the masculine dares to embrace its other half, its feminine half. Men dare to be strong and vulnerable at once. I am a mother of a boy, and that's my biggest concern. How can my son be strong and vulnerable at once? Because it's beautiful. In my dream, the feminine feels empowered and safe enough to share its ancient and sacred wisdom with the masculine, especially in the erotic domain. In the golden age, the sensual and the sexual leave the confined arena of pornification to become part of the spiritual experience. And in this golden age, the matriarchal and the patriarchal come finally together as egalitarian system, not to compete, but to complete each other and to co-lead the world together towards more balance, joy, and higher consciousness. And to complete my talk today, I would like to share with you a little bit of this feminine body wisdom that I inherited from my female ancestors. So, the idea is to honor the divine feminine, which is in every woman and in every man. I know people in the West, they don't like to move too much, but I'm going to make you move, walk the talk, right? So, uh, we will start sitting with the cabasa, the pelvic floor muscles. You're going to follow my hands. I will be the chef d'orchestre of your pelvic floor muscles. And then I squeeze and I release. So go straight, please. Your back straight, your feet on the floor. You breathe in and out very slowly. Relax your face. Smiling won't hurt. I like to see smiling face. Voila. And you squeeze and release. Squeeze, release, and breathe in and out very slow. What is very important is to learn to desexualize the pelvic floor area. It's a just a penis, it's a just a vagina, don't make a fuss about it. So squeeze and release. I am not between your legs to check if you are doing it or not, <laughs> but I trust that you are doing it because the more you do it, the more the blood circulation gets stronger, the more you will feel alive in that area. The pelvic floor muscles are quite complex, especially the vulva muscles, but we're going to focus only on one muscle, which is the perineum. I squeeze and I release. The perineum is the muscle between your, for gentlemen, your anus and your balls, and gentle ladies between your anus and your vagina. And that muscle, you squeeze it and you release it, and you squeeze it and you release it. And next time, when you are in a situation of stress, don't contract your jaws, contract your cabasa. You will see, the more you contract below, the more the energy will come down, and then to your biggest surprise, you will find yourself completely calm. Just keep on breathing in and out very slow, follow my hands, and squeeze and release. That was cabasa for dummies, a little bit. <laughs> We continue. I am not done with you. I am not done with you. Oh, you won't get rid of me so easily. Alors, we stand. If I can do it on crutches, you can do it on your legs. Alors, your both legs are going up and down. Both legs. I do it only with one, you do it with both. Up and down, and you shake. And then start shaking. And the idea is to shake the whole system, especially the memory of the body cells. Here, this movement belongs to Al Hadra in North Africa. It's trans dances to relax the body, get rid of stress, and shake, it. shake your boobs, ladies. 
I call this the higher intelligence. If your higher intelligence is shaking too much, you can always give them a bra with your hands, but shake them harder. A gentleman, you don't have need a bra here because they are smaller, and the gravity law works harder for the boobs, not for the balls. So, but ladies, shake more, 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 more. And now we're gonna use the voice because when you use your voice, you create a vibration inside of the body, which means you're gonna massage your organs inside. And here we go. Okay, more, 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 more. And now we're gonna make it a little bit stronger. So the knees bending. And then you go down and you're gonna do your knees one by one. One by one, one by one, with the hips, 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 hips to move the hips. Shake, shake, go a little bit, open a little bit your legs, go a little bit down. And go a little bit like this. I call this movement the diarrhea. <laughs> like you shit, right? So imagine you are shitting. Honey, come down, you don't shit, uh, next time you shit this way, go down. And you are shitting down out this gender split between the feminine and the masculine. All this kind of bullshit that we have been having in our system. Of course, for example, about our vagina. Your vagina is less, it's wrong. The penis envy theory of Monsieur Freud. This should disappear from the academic world. Here. <laughs> Ali, give me the... <laughs> more. <laughs> penis envy theory. <laughs> More. Again. Allez. Shit it out. Yes. The gentleman continue. When a man is vulnerable, they tell you don't be so weak. Don't be such a pussy. Don't be such a pussy. Gentlemen, don't be such a pussy. What do you do next time you go? More. Okay, and then when he tell you that don't be such a pussy, you say thank you next time, because being a pussy is a compliment, right? <laughs> and now we're going to move to this movement now, undulation here. Hands. This movement, I call it the Lemni Skate. It's a sensual movement. Before we had the wide movements, now we have the sensual movements here. Duck. So you undulate and you expand. Hands, so you expand with this new awareness, with this new gender wholeness. The feminine and the masculine are supposed to complete each other, not to compete. Here, complete, right and left. Feminine and masculine, right. Matriarchal and patriarchal. Expand, expand. Hands, hands. Gentlemen, you can move your here, here. Also for men, uh, don't forget, little boys, they do these dances with us until the age of 10. Uh. It's also for men, not only for women. More. Feel feminine also in your body, it won't hurt you, and it's very good for your libido, Ali. More. Here, up, ah. Expand. And then the matriarchal and the patriarchal, which finally come together to co-lead the world. And here we're gonna co-lead the last movement together. And I'm gonna do it with my crutch, you do it with your hand. Up, one arm up, one arm down. More, here, proud. You know Statue of Liberty in New York? Yes? St Liberty leading, enlightening the world with freedom. We enlighten the world with a feminine torch, feminine vision into women and men. The world is in need for more feminine wisdom. Here, hips. More, more, more. Hip, hip. Allez. Co-leading together, feminine and masculine, enlightening the world with the feminine torch. Wapa, allez, yapa. Yeah. Rocket, baby, yapa. More. Feminine torch. Yeah. Enlighten the world, allez. Da. Squeeze the caboose. And when you go to 
You squeeze your cabeza and you say yes. And here we go, three times and voice. Thank you. Merci. Dankeschön.